Welcome to the latest edition of the BRS at Insider. Josh Pound now joined by women's basketball head coach Chad Folsom. Coach, uh, squad snapped a three-game losing streak on, on Saturday with a pretty convincing win over Graceland. How big was that uh, for you guys to come out and, and pretty much take it to Graceland and lead throughout on Saturday? It was big. You know, uh, like you said, we started off strong. Um, I thought we did a great job getting the ball inside and we're finishing around the basket. Um, throughout the game, I thought our defense was really good. You know, uh, we were able to press and, and, you know, if you're not making shots, you can't press. And luckily, you know, we were making quite a few. We shot almost 50% on the floor from the floor, which I don't know when the last time we did that was. Um, <laughs> but uh, it allowed us to get into our presses, which allowed, to slow, allowed us to slow them down because they want to get out and run. So we did a pretty good job there. We also, I thought, did a good job at uh, uh, of, of owning the boards. You know, rebounding's been our thing, and they, they crashed the boards pretty hard, but we did a great job of keeping them off the glass and getting second shots for us. Um, and I thought we did a good job of handling their defense. You know, they're, they're a team that lately, they've been throwing all kinds of defenses at you. You know, they're running presses, they're running half-court traps, they're running uh, even dry, triangles and twos and boxes and ones. And so um, I thought our team did a great job at, at being prepared and then also uh, and in the fly, being able to execute and, and not get rattled with all the different uh, defenses coming at us. Well, Graceland is a difficult place to play, not sometimes because of what type of team Graceland is, but just because of the facility. It's a little darker. It's not the atmosphere is not always great. Just talk about what it, what it meant to see the team jump out and and, and kind of get that all out of the gate and then take it to Graceland. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's a it's a unique uh, <laughs> gym for sure. But uh, um, every every gym has its own uh, you know home court advantages. But uh, uh, we have struggled up there at times, you know, in, in recent past. But uh, I mean, it was great to come out and, and play strong, like you said from the beginning, kind of get a lead, you know, get a fourteen point lead going into half. Um, one thing different than our previous game is that you know they made a run at us, you know, in the second half, cut it to six and uh, whereas we folded uh, two nights before that you know with Peru but it was nice to be able to bounce back and respond which the ladies did and uh, hit some big shots and then be able to push the lead back up so we were able to stand the run this time and it was good good uh, you know good uh, growing for us as we continue into the next uh, two games. One of the more consistent uh, spots for you guys as of late has been your post play 38 points in the paint against Graceland how, how big is that? I mean, the shots aren't falling from the outside, but you know that you've been able to rely on Kayla Staley, Rachel Bumgartner, uh, Ali Brzezowski, Natalie Samara now. Mm -hmm. That's four bigs to rotate through there. How, how big has that been to kind of stabilizing things over the last month? That's huge. You know, I mean, uh, we've struggled from shooting, you know, on the outside uh, through the last month, and to have that uh, stability inside has been huge. And, you know, those are four of the better, you know, po posts in the league, and all four, you know, being able to have four of them is pretty <laughs> nice. You know, not, not many teams have that many and to go to, and uh, each night a different one kind of steps up. You know, last game was Natalie Samarin. You know, she goes 16 points and 11 rebounds, double-double. Uh, you know, and Rachel Baumgart had 12 points underneath. Kayla was double digits again, and uh, um, Allie didn't quite hit it from the floor, but was six of eight from the free throw line. You know, the other thing those four really do well for us is they rebound. You know, and I, that's why we're one. Of, we are the top offensive rebounding team in the league. Um, we've got those gals going for rebounds all the time. You know, they're relentless at crashing the boards and uh, have done a great job all season. So yeah, we're, we're fortunate to have uh, all four of them contributing for us. Well, believe it or not, we're in the final week of the regular season. The grind is 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 slowing down with just two games left. You go to m and on Wednesday, and then you're going to host Central Methodist back here to close out the regular season. Two very strong teams, two teams that, that have, you've typically been right there with down the stretch over the years and the, the top of the standing. Just what's, what's it going to take for you guys to, to be able to finish this, this regular season strong? You know, they're, they're, like you said, they're two of the top teams in the conference. Um, you know, we've got to come out and, uh, you know, defend. Defend always is, is the key. You know, you'll be able to guard. I think last time we played Mid-American Nazarene, they, they hit – 13 threes or something like that. I think everybody was hitting a three in the first half, and uh, uh, and their big guy had a good game against us too. So we've got to figure out some things to, to slow them down, and uh, um, and hopefully we can carry in what we did this last game against Graceland. I mean, I thought we moved the ball well on offense, and we we shared it, and we kicked it out when when things were clogged up, and you know took good shots, and hopefully we can keep that going uh, as we go into this week. Well, we go into next week, and we talked about before we came on the air. There's still a lot up in the air going into the final week of the regular season, which speaks volumes for not just uh, the women's programs, but where the conference is on a national scale. We said five teams have been ranked most of the season, six teams off and on, probably six or seven have been on the radar all season long. Just talk what that means, by, especially now that this is, this is that final year of Division One, Division Two, NAI, to have that many teams, you know, 
out there where coaches are looking at going, okay, you survived the Heart of America Athletic Conference, you got a good chance to make a run in, in the national tournament. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think in 19 years that I've been here, this is the strongest the conference has been. You know, you got uh, eight teams uh, have all, including us, Grandview, and the six that are already in the pool. You know, pools. Evangel will probably be in there this week. Um, but uh, we've had eight teams in the polls some, at some point during the year. And, and like you said, we've had five almost every week and six a few weeks there too. So I do think that the, the nation knows that the, the Heart of America is the toughest conference in America, you know, in NAI Division One basketball. So, um, and, and every night's been a battle, you know, and uh, the top teams are knocking each other off. But, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a great league this year and, and uh, like better than I've, I've ever seen. So like you said too, the, the conference tournament's up in the air. This is the first first year um, that we're actually going to take only the top eight um, to the uh, to the to the tournament so only eight um, teams make it so we've been fighting we're fighting for that eighth spot right now um, but um, I think all you know it'll it'll be a battle when we get there you know the, the, t the number two spot still up in the air two teams are tied with five losses Clark and, and William Penn then the the next spot down you've got three teams within a game of each other Evangel, Mid-American Nazarene, Culver Stockton so who knows what spot everybody's going to be in it besides Central Methodist. You know, we know they're going to be the number one seed and, uh, you know, they've proven it all year. So, but besides that, it, who knows who's going to play who uh, next week, <laughs> but it should be a great tournament and, and a heck of a battle, I think, between all the teams. Well, finally, before we let you go, you mentioned 19 years here as the head coach. We made that transition a number of years ago from Division Two to Division One, and it took a few years. You kind of helped bring the heart to respectability your your program was the first one to actually get down to a, the division one tournament win a game in the tournament make a little bit of a run and then obviously there was the year where three of the four in the in the semifinals were all from the heart of america athletic conference it does it kind of feel like you've known it since we made the transition but is this the year that you kind of feel like okay now everybody else realizes and it's the final year of the two divisions well yeah i mean we've we i mean we went to the final four because that really legitimized our league you know we had three teams in the final four national champion mid-american nazarene and that next year we got five teams into the tournament you know uh the following year i think we had five again kind of dropped a little bit the last year or two or three or so or four but uh I think this year there's a legit opportunity for six teams from the heart to get in the national tournament, and that's pretty awesome. You know, <laughs> I mean, and and I think all six of them have a shot at, at making noise and going far. So it, it does. It you know, our league is definitely the top NAI Division One league, and hopefully when we merge in a year, you know, we can still maintain that. And and um, I know it's going to be even tougher when you add more teams to to the mix, but uh, you know, good good women's basketball is being played in the Heart of America Conference, no doubt. So Coach will take you squad down to Olathe 5.30 on Wednesday against MNU, and then they'll come back home at 2 o'clock on Saturday to host Central Methodist University. Good luck. All right. Final week of the regular season, Appreciate Coach. it. Thank you, Josh. A wise man once said, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. Welcome back to this latest edition of the BRSN Insider. Josh Pound now joined by men's basketball head coach Ryan Moody. And coach, you guys bounced back from a, a tough midweek loss uh, to pick up a, a solid win over Graceland. It's, a, it's never an easy place to go play just because of the weird atmosphere, weird gymnasium, but you guys are able to... to get out to a big lead there in the second half and then keep your halftime lead win by four. Just talk about what that meant for, for you and the team to see them bounce back like they could after that tough loss earlier in the week. Yeah, it was a, it was a couple of rough losses. You know, I mean, we lost two in a row to two really good teams in Peru State and Clark. And uh, the one at Clark, you know, a double overtime, seven hours away. You know, that one kind of took the, the wind out of our sails a little bit. And I think that you saw us with uh, a little bit of that hangover against Peru. And then, yeah, to get to get to get the guys back and be able to just go on the road, um, kind of recalibrate, get our get our confidence back. I thought we played. Uh, I thought we played well. We still didn't make shots, um, but it's that time of year. You know, I'm watching everybody on TV and <laughs> in every league across the country, and nobody's making shots right now. You know, I mean, everybody's just kind of beat up and tired and trying to get to the finish line. So going to Graceland, yeah, you're right. It's a tough place to play. Uh, it was senior night, you know, and I thought our guys responded really well. And like you said, we got out to a big lead and then kind of just were able to hang on. So, you know, with with only three, two games left in the season, you know, we'll take whatever we can get. So it, it 
not hitting shots right now, is that just a matter of it's just that time of year? I mean, is there anything that you, as a coaching staff, I mean, the guys are always in the gym. The guys are always getting their shots up. Is it just a matter of it's it's just – you got to battle through it, and eventually those things are going to start falling again. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I had the answer, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, we, we're, we're a pretty good shooting team in general um, and and just haven't shot it well the last couple of weeks. You know, I don't know if it's tired legs, if it's tired minds. You know, I think a lot of it can be mental fatigue, not just physical fatigue, and I think our guys are um, in that spot right now, and I think a lot of people in the country are in that spot right now. And, and it's just a matter of getting in and making sure that there's a fine line of getting your work done and also staying fresh, you know, and, and sometimes you just need to see it go in. Um, and, and that can have an effect on an entire team. So yeah, our guys are in here, they're still working. Um, you know, it's just a matter of us getting, I think the reps up and, and watching the ball go in the net. And then, and then hopefully that carries over to game time. One thing that your team's been known for the last, you know, two or three, four years is that the consistent outside shot, three point shot. But I think probably what's been lost this year in some of those games, you've developed quite a, a decent amount of post plays and, and post players, uh, and you've really become a threat from not just beyond the arc, but on the inside as well. Yeah, we flipped the script a little bit this year. I mean, our, I think our uh, efficiency and our percentages inside the three-point line this year are a lot better than they were last year. And I think that's a, a credit to our, our young bigs. I mean, we've got a whole group of four or five guys that are sophomores and freshmen that are learning the game as it goes this year and kind of gaining experience. And, and, and then I think we attack the rim a lot better as a group this year than we did last year. And we survived a lot off the three point line and, and uh, we still shoot it well and we still got some pretty good shooters and, and that's gotta be a big part of our game plan. But I think that we've kind of made some adjustments in the fact that we can really attack the rim and get to the free throw line with this group. So you have the final week of the regular season here. You go to MNU on Wednesday, then you'll wrap up at home against central Methodist. MNU, you beat them here, but it's always tough mm -hmm. on the road, in the heart. It'll be a big game for them. Is there a game behind you and Peru mm -hmm. State in the conference standings? Just talk about what it's going to need to see from your guys to, to pull out a win on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, Mid-America is a really tough place to play. They're, they're playing very well right now. They beat Clark on Saturday in a double overtime game. Um, you know, they're long. Uh, they're really shooting it well as of late uh, from three-point line, which is kind of different for a Mid-America team. And, and they make things really challenging on defense. Like they have the number two shot blocker in the country right now in Dakota Quinn. So they, they make it hard scoring at the rim. Um, they do a great job defensively and, and, and just do their thing like Mid-America. I mean, they like to run. They like to get their shots uh, in transition. So, you know, we'll, we'll go in there. We, we, we love playing there. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a home away from home. We'll have a lot of fans down there from, from Overland Park in the Kansas City area. Um, and, and it is, it's down to, to crunch time. You know, there's two regular season games left. We're still fighting for seeding in our postseason tournament and a potential bid to the national tournament. I mean, there's a lot of things on the line. So, you know, right now it's a, it's a, it's a matter of us just making sure our minds and bodies are right and, and going in there and giving it the best we can. When you talked about the end of the regular season, there's still a lot up in the air for that conference tournament. Mm -hmm. Really, it's, it's William Penn and then the field. Uh, just talk about the parity that, that we've seen in the conference this year. Yeah, the league's crazy this year. You know, I mean, I think that uh, with two games left to play, you're right. I mean, second through eighth is still up for grabs. And, and no one knows, you know, until next Saturday if you're going to be on the road, if you're going to be at home in the conference tournament. So, I mean, there is a lot. We, we, a lot of us know that we control our own destiny. You know, and, that, and that's kind of the position we're in right now. I mean, if we can just take care of our own business, then, you know, we're probably going to end up third and, and with a chance to host at home. And if you don't take care of business, you could end up fifth or sixth and be on the road to start. So, you know, I mean, I think that the, the parity of the league has been, um, I think some have looked at it as maybe the league's down. I'm not sure that's exactly the case. I think the league is probably pretty about as good as it's, as it's been. Uh, but people are just beating up on each other, you know, kind of like the Big Ten. Everybody says the Big Ten beats up on each other. And I think this year the heart really did beat up on each other, minus William Penn. And so, you know, I, I, it's fun that it matters this time of year. And, and I think that uh, everybody involved, coaches, players, schools, all want to be playing for something meaningful in, in February. And we're all there. And finally, we talk about uh, it's, it's known that there's a third bid, a, a host bid, so to speak, for the conference. But – a couple years ago when the contract was renewed to host that, there was some stipulations put in there on what exactly that host bid uh, had to have. Mm -hmm. And then we had some clarification earlier uh, this last week on it's a 600 win percentage, including the postseason play. Mm -hmm. So just talk about, you know, you know, 
why that was put in place, maybe not necessarily that, but like what it's going to take in order then to see, you know, a, a, that host bid actually not just go off to be another at-large sure. bid. You know, I mean, the, 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 the national tournament is the ultimate goal that everybody wants to get to, right? I mean, that's the end of the year. You want to be one of the 32 playing in Kansas City, and this is actually the last year for it to look that way. You know, so, yeah, we, our school or our conference gets a host bid uh, because we help with the tournament um, down in Kansas City, and, and that – 60% win percentage is an overall percentage. Um, so essentially how it goes is the first and second place teams kind of get an automatic bid, kind of depending on how they finish in the, in the tournament, in the heart tournament. And typically that's held to form first and second have won the league. If for some reason third or fourth won the league, that team would get a bid to the national tournament. So the next team in line that is not up for an automatic bid would then, would then be uh, given the opportunity to have the host bid, which is the 32nd seed at the national tournament. Um, you do have to win 60% of your games, you know, so in a 30 game season, you, you went, need to win 18 games to go 18 and 12. And then you have the tournament in there as well. And so, you know, you could win one, lose one and be 19 and 13 and potentially be at a 59% and maybe be looking at out from the outside in. So, you know, all, all we know is we could, we just have to control. What we can control, you know, we got to play well on Wednesday. We get, we need to play well on Saturday at home against CMU and just kind of let the chips fall where they may. Um, what we're trying to do is finish as best we can. And, and we think we have the team good enough to win the tournament. Um, and so then you kind of take care of your own business there too. So, you know, we'll, we'll just take them one at a time and kind of see how all that shakes out. And, uh, and, and hopefully uh, the hearts represented really well down at the national tournament. Well, the Ravens will be in Olathe 730 on Wednesday night, and then back here on campus on Dugan Jones Court in the Nolan Gymnasium at 2 or 4 o'clock on Saturday as they'll wrap up the regular season against Central Methodist. Coach, good luck in the Thanks, final Josh. week. Appreciate it.